Hello everybody, it's SD Medhaven here today, and I wanted to go over a tank that uh, has been brought up on my channel a couple of times. People have been asking me to cover the uh, Charlemagne. Now, the Charlemagne is a tank that whenever it first came out, I immediately said this thing is absolutely monstrous in my original review of this tank. Um, it also has a couple of unique features for a tank in game. It actually is one of the only tanks that actually has uh, viewports on the side of the tank that can allow you to spot. Uh, for instance, whenever you look at the side here, that little hub on the right side and the left side is actually viewports. So whenever you go over to the module viewer and you go down the crew, you're going to see that those are actually lighting up, which means that those are the driver viewports. Your driver can see through those because there's nothing else for the driver to look out up in the front of the tank. So whenever you're side scraping, those actually do apply a little bit of an advantage whenever you're pulling off to the side, giving you a little bit of a view view range advantage on peaking corners instead of needing to poke your barrel around or wait for your hatch to come around a corner. Now, the armor of the Charlemagne is one thing that I do really want to cover. Uh, this thing, you know, from this point of view, this may not look uh, too scary, but that's against premium. Against 220 standard pin, pretty good turret. You can see a couple of weak spots up here in the side, inside of the turret there. Uh, nothing really crazy. But then, whenever you max out your gun depression, what's really nice about the Charlemagne Where'd the hatch go? It is completely gone. Auto ricochet angle. But if they load heat rounds, they can go through it, but even then, it's still difficult. Uh, a little bit of a weak spot up top. Your gun mantle is nice and thick. So if you're barely poking over your gun, they're pretty much only going to be able to see like the top portion. And it's a little bit harder to make these shots actually count unless they're loading a really good pin and can squeeze in some really hard shots that even then is still ricochet because of the angle of the armor. Now, the side armor is actually adjusted at a 15 degree slant downward with 55 degrees in the front and 55 degrees in the lower plate. There's 168, you get 130 in the top, 70 millimeter sides. So all around, this tank is really good until you're versing heat or higher penetration. But even against that higher pin, you still have a really good haul down capability, yeah, except for those same weak spots that don't actually change on this tank. Even the top portions of the armor are still capable of maintaining that ricochet. Now, what makes the Charlemagne so good? This is against AP rounds, keep in mind. Uh, you see a lot of auto ricochet around the, uh, this is the tier 10 super conch. This is against 220, but the moment that we load the armor penetrating round, premium round, if you're facing a super conch, even ever so slightly flat on, you can technically go through its spaced armor in the front and completely over pin it. Or even whenever it's side scraping, a lot of weak spots actually start to open up. And this is against a tier 8 premium tank. So, I mean, yeah, it's an absolute monstrosity when it comes down to it. It's a 120 millimeter low velocity gun. And whenever they say low velocity gun, they really do mean low velocity. For instance, your standard round travels at 597 meters a second, and your premium round travels at 924 meters a second. Along with the premium round, well, not premium round, but your um, high explosive traveling at uh, 597 as well. Now, one thing that will confuse a little bit of people is whenever I talk about this tank and its premium rounds lie. Uh, for instance, you see this round, it says AP. Then you come down to the bottom round and it says APCR. It is actually not APCR. If you look at the round name description, it is the APL15A11DU, which is just an upgraded model of the original round that this tank offers, which is actually an armor piercing round rather than the armor piercing composite round. So there is a massive difference between these two round types. Since it's AP, it actually has five degrees of readjustment on normalization, while APCR only supports two degrees of readjustment on contact. Let's hope whenever I say it this time, I mean it. The ammo rack inside this tank has never been a problem for me. Unless I'm getting shot from the front into the lower plate and they somehow manage to catch it out, but that's very rare. Anyways, let's jump into some matches inside the Charlemagne. I want to show this thing off and talk about the tank and how much I've actually enjoyed it over the um, past, what has it been, like two years since it's been added to the game? Now, don't quote me on the um, viewports in the front. Um, I was reading over on the Reddit and the World of Tanks forums over on PC and to find out that they do work as viewports for the tank to be able to side scrape. So it is something that I do want to test. Uh, during my testing, uh, the results of that testing I'll actually be posting in the comments of this video if it does work or not. So be keeping an eye out for that if you guys actually want to know. 
Anyways, I'm going to go off of it because the person that posted it had a Reddit score, like a karma score of like 80-something uh, thousand for World of Tanks, so I actually am inclined to believe it, but <laughs> currently I don't have the link. I was reading it over um, like two, two or three days ago whenever I was looking at it, uh, studying up on this tank a little bit before I was going to do the video on it. Now on Swamp up against Tier 10s, you see, this is not a bad Tier 10 match. It's five Tier 10s, two Tier 9s. Sorry, Tier 9s. It should have been swapped on that. It should have been two 10s and five 9s. And then the rest is 8s, and that would have been some really good matchmaking right there. But instead, uh, it's completely flip-flopped. Alrighty. I, I should have put camo on this. Blade's going to give me so much crap. He's going to look at this video, too, and he's going to be like, What the heck, man? You always complain about me putting camo on. And I'll, I'll just sit there and be like, I didn't have time. It was go, go, go. Had to get in there quick. Ricky Bobby style. Anyways. This feels like it's going to be a little bit of a long start off for the match. Going to get into one of my more liked positions, which is just an easy inside pull right here. If they ever come up, you're actually just hauled down right there. Makes it nice because you can actually kind of overwhelm the groups of three that like to pull up here if you do it. Now, I wonder if the 430 is in the open here. Now, I really should um, get some editing software to be able to do this properly. I don't think I can fire through that window. I think I'm going to see him. And MBTP. However, I got a crazy slow round, so it's not going to make any difference. If he pops out or not. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to back up into you. I'm just blind as a bat right here. And he's down. Highlander. There's actually going to be a lot of guys up in that ridge line over here, so it's kind of uncomfortable to pull. One thing we can do, though, is knock down a couple of trees. These are actually covered by the trees off in the distance, so it's a little bit easier to knock them down. This one I prefer to knock down with the HE, because you can never, ever get it seated right so you use a he and you want to knock it down about right there and then doing that allows you to um play your mediums a little bit more aggressive than normal because if you get tds up in the back line here and you get the trees knocked down these guys can't see anything anyways this is just an awkward situation 413 Decent reverse speed. It's not the best. And then with the uh, power to width that this tank offers, it's not bad. You can get up in, and then you can <laughs> you can feel uncomfortable. Because, I mean, you're talking about a 16.67 power to weight, which I'm pretty sure console is not the same. That's me quoting off of what PC looks like. And then 35 top speed, 15 reverse. What makes that so nice is that the power to weight that this thing offers, you maintain that 35 top speed which makes this thing seem faster than what it actually is as I proceed to shoot a rock. That's unfortunate. Really awkward spot to be stuck in, though. No one is willing to make a push right now. Kind of just a little bit of a lock and hold. A lot of guys coming in from the back side. Outside my render range. So not much I can exactly do, but I might... I don't know if the IS-3 is still here or not. I kind of want to pull. 385. What's up with me and never um, being able to actually hit my uh, alpha? That's been really consistent the past couple of days. Um, Where was he at? Right about here. We have a blind shot. Now, I'm not a big fan of firing off a crap load of premium, but... In all honesty, the Charlemagne is one of those tanks that I made a mistake. I made a bad play. 452. There we go. Now we're doing a little bit more. Hopefully that Caliban wants to pull over and help out a little bit. Thank you. So I'm going to hold my shell. It's going to make it a little bit nicer. Do you want to back up and get hauled down? As I'm going to be getting rushed. I am so dead. What well, would be nice of is if I can uh, try and get his fuel tank. But unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. Yep. 
All right, some good matchmaking. Here we go. Um, two Gorinches on the enemy team, and that's whenever that 270 AP round is going to come in real handy because those Gorinches, even with their buff turret armor, still cannot stand up to 270 AP pen. I mean, even against like 270 heat, like, yeah, there, there's like no difference there. But with AP, if I can get a premium AP round on a tank, I am overjoyed about it. And there's a very small amount of tanks in game that actually have premium uh, AP rounds. For instance, on the Oni, basically all of the Japanese heavy, including the uh, Orochi that's going to be a part of the season pass coming out next season for, I believe it was labeled as the tier 100 reward. Hopefully whenever that actually comes out that they'll consider buffing that tank because it's underperforming. If you guys can do me a favor, whenever you get your Orochi and you start playing it, please run the 15 centimeter on it because it's a gun that needs a little bit of love. It, I made a video on it like um, could be one of the best, but in fact it is not. You're, whenever you run the 15 centimeter and you use AP rounds inside of it, I've been able to achieve like 3,000 damage in some matches. 4,000 damage in one match, and that's like literally just one of the hardest matches I've probably ever played inside that tank. And Nope, 470 damage though, that's nice. But um, yeah, just I, I'm kind of hoping that whenever they pop it out that they consider buffing it because it, it's a tank that definitely needs some love. That side armor is not that good. It was originally intended to be a tier 7, uh, but at last second they were all like, let's just buff the frontal armor and make it a tier 8. Nice, 506. I'm actually doing above my alpha now. This might be the match. And here we go. Got a Churchill 7. I feel kind of abusive going up against tier 6. I mean, I'll get real angry. If I'm in a tier 6, I'll have a good time. But whenever I'm going against tier 6 and I'm in a tier 8, I feel mean. Ah, speak of the devil, there's no Rachi. And he's running the big old derpy gun. Nice. Now, with that little bit of a um, side armor on this, uh, it's slightly angled inward. You do you can side scrape inside this tank pretty reliably, but you do got to keep in mind that if you do side scrape, uh, your turret's not exactly the strongest. So that's one thing you got to keep in mind whenever you do it. Uh, let's see if we can try and hit his ammo rack. I do think the ammo rack is on that corner plate. Fortunately, a little bit too far left. But that Tiger P is not a happy camper right now. Now, I do want to make a video on the Tiger P. That is an amazing tank. Even the Tiger 1's amazing, but Tiger P, it just feels so much better. With the way that the armor is on it. Let's see if we can get a fuel tank. Unfortunate, but that's okay. We always got multiple chances. He still has a thousand health. And artillery barrage. You know, because we all love to get absolutely splashed like crazy by artillery. Let's go after Tiger P. Since he's so generous in giving us his side. And this Gorinch, we might have another chance to hit that fuel tank if he doesn't angle against me here in a moment. There we go. But he has an automated fire extinguisher. Ah, uh, low, already. Yep, M44, that's the one that's spamming. You know, I've also had people ask me on how it is that I can consistently call out fuel tanks and hit them. Uh, look at the module viewer. If you study our, the module viewers, it is beyond helpful. Just because it makes it to where you can take full advantage inside certain tiers. And tier 8's kind of my specialty. That's where I love to play this game. Tier 8's got some of those diverse combat that you'll run into. And a freedom up in front. Freedom is a little bit of a hard case to crack. Do you gotta catch him out just right? But then again, this guy seems to be a little bit AFK. So, what do we got? T25? I wonder if I can get another shell off. I am close. Closer than most. And good game. I, I'm still not a big fan of the MVP score screen. I still feel like they need to get rid of it. 158,000 silver made, all standard rounds, 4,400 damage combined. Actually, 4,500 combined. 
Um, first class mastery, high caliber, and 71.31 for the mark. Honestly, I don't really care for marks anymore. I stopped caring about marking tanks just because the pools are so high, and it's like a second job marking tanks. I, I just don't have fun trying to mark tanks. Honestly, if you guys are having problems marking tanks, there's no value to it, in my opinion. It's just completely useless. Hafaya Pass. In all honesty, I don't think anyone is a fan of the new Scorpion Pass that's been released. I prefer the old version. Just get rid of this top hill and everyone would be happy about the map. This version of it, on the other hand, uh, no one fights over Oasis. Like, if they if they want to actually make this map a little bit more engaging, uh, they should just do, like, an encounter and put it right here. Like, right here in the open. Force both teams to actually fight over that area. And then make the map a little bit smaller. Cut it off to, like, right here and then bring it up and make it a little bit smaller. For those small engagements. And you see, oh, that's the greatest way to look at it. In the matches that it's a 7 versus 7 or 10 versus 10. Shrink down the maps and make an encounter. Everyone, I wouldn't complain about that. I'd be totally down. Rather than versing bots. I'd rather have a smaller map in 10 versus 10 or 7 versus 7. Encounter. Because that would actually be a little bit more engaging. Um... Now, Hafaya Pass. It's going to take me a little bit. And as you can see, it's like we're actually moving at a decent pace with that 35 top. And we're maintaining 30 the entire time, even going up slightly up a hill here. And this is what I'm talking about, about that 16 power to weight, giving this thing a really good advantage when it comes on the mobility. You're just capable of having a little bit of maintaining. And as I said, no one really fights over that bottom section. Here goes my entire team. Uh, Tiger... Tiger 2. Unfortunate. That is 245 turret armor. I really should have just held my shot there. I was thinking 185. But I forgot that they buffed it. There's that 168 low. And here I am on uh, all alone. I'm out of spells, but I am certainly not out of shells. <laughs> Words of the great Gandalf. Uh... Tiger 2's back in the open, so I guess... We'll back up a tad more, keep the turret down. There we go, 435. And there we go. Push him off, thank you. I don't know what chillin', what Chills was doing. But, uh, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> Your tracks are in the way. Orochi. Orochi's got a really thick frontal plate, so I'm actually going to load this AP round in. But his sides are only 42, so we do have a pin advantage on his side armor. Which just means that it would hurt if we hit him. I don't know what our uh, 703 is doing. There's, like, no point in pulling like he is right there. That's unfortunate. I would love to show off some, like, ricochets that this tank is capable of getting, because you can get some really nasty ones. I think that, uh, yeah, 705 is back out in the open. He looks like he's fully upgraded, but I'm not 100% sure about that. I don't want to pull right here, because, yep, there's Artie. And that Arachi's coming up, so... Or not. I guess we're both on the fritz about this, but Rachi, 703 is coming up behind you. Hello, Artie. We all appreciate you. That is a big derp gun, so I don't want to give him my rear if he faces me. I was holding the trigger. That's my fault for letting it fly. Taking on the 705 is something I really want to do. There's one way to show off the armor of this tank. It's to take on a tank that's a complete tier above. And it looks like he does have the muzzle break. So I do think he's fully upgraded. Is he fully upgraded? I can't tell. That's a little bit of a hard, uh, hard tell. Now, I wonder... Nope. 
You need heat rounds to be able to do that. It's too deep of an angle. I'm just waiting for the sky cancer to hit me. If I'm being so honest. I don't think that's the upgraded turret. I could easily pull up farther on him and get his lower plate and fully um, expose it, but I really want to show off this thing tearing through a turret. Because I know the 705, it's got a weak spot in the front of it that I can go through. Or at least I think it does. I don't know if that's a fully upgraded turret or not. I don't think it is because it's got the rounded off hatches. I mean, there's two tier 9s in this lobby, so there's a possibility that one of them is not fully upgraded. So we're going to load high explosive. Hopefully we get this loaded in. I always love to be able to get a little bit of HE pin going off in a match. Nice, Artie. Get hit by Piggy. And here we go. Top armor. It's 120 low velocity shell. We're going to wait for him to pull forward again. That's a bounce. That's okay. This is um, a match that's pretty much over right now. Except for Sky Cancer. Sky Cancer is never over. There we go, a little bit of turret armor. I am going to be loading. Uh, I loaded the high explosive to hit that um, CC that's over here on the left side. There we go, he's out in the open, but unfortunately I wasn't loaded. 97 hit points. Let's see if I can make a... Yeah, we'll try to go for an aggressive pull here. Actually, we're not going to pause this. This is really sketchy. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Let's go. We got this. We're fine. All right. Easy approach. I got to say that um, last moment required all my brain power to not get into an accident or kill myself. It looks like our TD just got taken down. 443. Hello, CC. You know you got a really long reload, right? Your interclip. But then again, I mean, you, you, took, you took it and you sent it. You, you had no fear. Just like how I'm not going to have any coming up on you. Let's get on your side here. Get ourselves defended. I am going to want to use the premium round because it's higher shell velocity. And good game. I couldn't see anything with the fire in my face. And once again, 120,000 silver made, 4,740 damage dealt. This is Mastery Badge, uh, 73.28. <laughs> Jumping up by 2% inside the matches inside this tank. No, but Charlemagne is an all-around solid tank. Let's put one more into it and see how it goes. Uh, this might be the bad one, though. And Ella Main up against tier 10. Some pretty feisty ones at that. At, at least there is no... Scratch that, there's a Turan. Uh, I was going to say Redonculus tanks in the enemy team, but uh, unfortunately, you know, Turan. That's okay, though. I mean, it's a part of the game now. We just got to get used to it. And I got to understand that the thing can tear through my turret. <laughs> Anywhere. <laughs> I think it could pin my face with standards. <laughs> I'm sad now. Oh, man. Oh, well. There's a lot of travel time in this map. Bone, do the salute. Do it. All right, here we go up in position. As you can see, a minute and a half of travel time. <laughs> uh, you see, 35 is a nice top speed whenever you're engaging in combat because you're actually capable of moving around according to the map and whenever you're inside this close engagement. So whenever it's close engagement, it feels quick. But whenever you're actually driving places... It's like playing farming simulator or like a, a trucking game, like some mud runner or snow runner. I mean, either or. They're both good games, but slow, slow games. Still fun. Or like doing a cargo run on a space game. Didn't want to try something spicy. Yeah, what, what's the odds of me 
Yeah, let's, let's dumb it down right there. Critical. Okay. I don't think you're the one I critical, but I hit somebody. Since these are slower rounds, I do have to kind of find the uh, mark. Because they like to arc. If you're aiming at, like, uh, you're out of range, your shells are actually going to go way too high up to hit the target correctly. Conway. I doubt that I'm going to be able to get a shot on him. Actually, I'm going to zoom in right here and wait a sec. And since these are almost a kilometer a second... Was it like 957? Yep. There we go. And seeing that big blue round off there in the distance, that might have been the Turan. We're going to sit and wait for another second. Oh, that came from... That's a guess. That's probably a bad guess. That's a waste of silver. Um... Yeah, I'm playing Guessing Simulator right now. What's down there? 279E? If I pull on him, I'm going to lose way more hit points than I want to. But if I pull on him, I'll be able to help out. You know, let's go help out Bone. Yeah, Bone Bone needs some assistance. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to full send it. We're going to try and go for... Tracks, I guess. Amorax hit, so let's actually see if we can pop a stop. And Tomahawk! <laughs> Strum Tiger! <laughs> Go! <laughs> Alright, this is this is actually a good last match to see. <laughs> the Strum he just pulled in. 408. Was that Lord Tourette's? No, it's Nitro Turtle. Okay, I was I was thinking Lord Tourette's, because that would have been amazing. Alrighty, peachy time. 460. Bone, <laughs> guard me, <laughs> defend me. You are the armor. I'll pull up with you. Conway, I think I got spotted off from the left side. I'm going to get to Rand, aren't I? I don't know. It's a really big maybe. Hold on. Nope, he's out. I kind of want to get into that rock right here. Ooh, I should have took it a little bit more time to aim that one out. That's okay, though. Four hundred and fifty one. No, not Bone! Well, at least we took down the, uh... Conway. You know what? I actually trust my turret armor against the Tier 9. Reloading heat! And this is what's really nice about the Charlemagne. You're capable of doing these really nice brawls. Even against, like, Tier, uh, Tier 10 heavies. So, you know, I made a missed shot, but I don't think he's going to pull me. That's a Yagaru. That's a Yagaru that missed a Roo. Gonna go for a dirty cross and then get a pie. That Kampanzer should have waited. Nice. People are struggling to shoot at me. Really slow end here. How far back do I gotta go? About right here. Hmm. Slow 
little lineup right here. If I can't pin his turret, I'm probably just gonna load uh, high explosives and splash him each time he pulls. If he pulls, that is. Now, you probably notice I hit my uh, consumable. That's to help me kind of spot out right here at the 319 meters because it is a medium tank. I don't know how good his concealment is, so this might help me get a spot advantage on him. And that is a Turan. And a medium coming around in the back. I actually kind of want to take down that medium more than I do want to take down the Turan. No point, because it's a waffle. Unfortunate. And SU-100. Mm, he's not spotted anymore. It's 5 to 2, so Turan and SU. Turan's a big scary. Two hundred and thirty-three. That's unfortunate. We hit the tracks. Really slow, high explosive rounds. Of reloading premium that would have hit. But this should be game. Good game. And the Charlemagne once again on top MVP. I don't know uh, first class. First class mastery. Okay. For 1,750 experience inside that match. And shout out the bone, dude. Good game. Anyways, let's talk a little bit about the Charlemagne. You know, the Charlemagne to me is an absolute beauty inside this game. I've always found myself to really enjoy pulling it out. The design behind it, the rustic look to it. As you can see, your fuel tanks and your little exhaust pipes in the back just absolutely blown out. And the overall extremely reliable armor that this tank offers to put up against anything. Plus the possible custom additional spotting that you can get when you side scrape. The overangling, the reliable haul down capabilities, the 10 degrees of gun depression. And the 440 alpha, which is something I didn't even go over with this tank, or the 530 um, with your high explosive, but no, honestly, it's like if you can hit him with your standard hit him with the standard, the low time in this tank at 11.8 seconds does, does kind of make it hard to get some HEs in, but if I can get an HE in, I'm going to try and get an HE in, but I'm always confused whenever people tell me that they don't like to play their Charlemagne. The thing about it is, is that it's a tank that doesn't like to brawl compared to others, even though its armor seems like it wants to with your 70 millimeter side armor and your decently all round thick turret, your turret itself. And that's what's blocking shots at 105 on top of the gun mantle there. But your turret, it's all about maintaining really deep angles and making sure that you're utilizing the 10 degrees of gun depression as much as you can. Cause this is a tank that relies heavily on auto ricochet angles more than it does the actual thickness of the armor. Yet, I've always been blown away by it. The first time I played it, and even after playing it today, I can still say without a, a benefit of a doubt that this tank is still an absolute monster to be reckoned with. And I can't remember if they gave this away a little while back, but if they did, give it a chance if you didn't really think too much about it prior. And just know that whenever you fire off your rounds inside this tank, you don't always need to be shooting premium inside this. 220 standard pin inside of close quarters engagements is enough to go through tier 10s consistently and make you a lot of silver inside of World War II. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned a couple of new things and, you know, got to laugh at me playing pretty slow today inside this tank and needing to actually kind of adjust a couple of things inside the video. Anyways, till next time, I hope you enjoyed it. And my take on this tank, it's totally worth picking up if you don't already have it. Anyways, tech next time. I'm out of here.